Okay, so this is the last part of the class. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a little bit of audio work. We're gonna adjust the gain on these clips. And we're also gonna add some really small crossfades in between the clips to kind of smooth out any pops that might be happening at the edit point. After we do that, we're going to export this uh, to upload to a social media site like YouTube or something like that, YouTube, Vimeo, that kind of thing. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our timeline. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom left corner of the timeline to the fast menu. We're gonna to go to audio data. This is where we turned our waveform on earlier. But we have another option called clip gain. We also have volume, but we're gonna focus on clip gain. Clip gain is a clip wide adjustment. You raise or lower the gain for the entire clip. Volume allows you to raise and lower the volume within the clip. For this, we're just gonna focus on clip gain. So once again, I'm going down to the fast menu in the bottom left corner of the timeline. We're gonna to go to audio data and we're gonna choose clip gain. And when you do, you have a little button now in the bottom left corner of each of your clips. And you've got a scale on the clips that kind of represents the gain adjustment you're gonna make. So I'm gonna to go to the very first couple of clips here. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna play till we get to this clip right here, the second one. Lunch break. Okay, now, if you will recall, Audio 2 is Tristan's microphone. Audio 1 is Roy's microphone. And you might have been able to hear a little hum in some of these clips. And that is because, uh, for some reason, whenever she was silent, uh, Rory's microphone seemed to pick up a little bit of hum. So, or the goal here is that, or it might have been Tristan's, but the goal here is that essentially uh, whenever Rory's not talking, we're going to bring her volume all the way down. Whenever Tristan's not talking, we're going to bring that volume all the way down. And we're just going to alternate that. We also want to make sure that our audio... <laughs> Lunch break! in our audio meters is kind of going up into the yellow area. So if we look up here in the upper left corner of the timeline, there are some little audio meters. And basically, you know, balanced audio or good audio is kind of hitting in the yellow area of the audio meters. Now it's really kind of hard to see this. Lunch break. Up here. So I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit of customization on your interface, okay? I really haven't talked about that much in this particular class because I want to kind of work with most stuff at the default settings and with the default interface and all that. Okay, however, these audio meters are really small and kind of hard to kind of determine where things are hitting as far as your levels. So we have larger audio meters called the audio tool that we can open up and then we can dock it over here on the right side of the timeline. So to open up the audio tool, we're going to go to Tools, Audio Tool, Tools, Audio Tool. That's going to open up this audio tool right here to move it around. We can just grab this gray bar at the top. We can grab the bottom right corner, kind of stretch it out there. But what I want to do is I want to put this audio tool on the right side of my timeline. So if you look around the interface, all of your windows have a purple tab on the left side of the window. And we can actually grab that purple tab and start to drag this around. And as I do, green bars are gonna pop up around the interface. And those green bars represent a place where I can put this window. So I'm gonna grab my audio tool. I'm gonna grab that purple tab I'm gonna drag it over this green bar on the right side of my timeline. And when that area highlights that kind of white rectangle, I release the mouse. And now I've put my audio tool in its own little window on the right side of my timeline. Okay, now I'm gonna play this. Lunch break. And basically what we want is we want her dialogue to average 
somewhere between like minus six and minus 12. Okay, kind of hitting kind of around this area right here. So we're gonna do two things. First of all, I'm gonna to go to this little button here in the bottom left corner of the clip on track one. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna pull that all the way down. Then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna click the little button in the bottom left corner of the clip on A2, and I'm gonna raise that up. And when I do, a little black line appears that represents where I set the level for that clip and a number appears that shows me how much I've either raised or lowered the gain. I'm gonna drag my play it back, I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna look at my meters. Lunch break! Okay, and it starts to now go up kind of in the yellow area. Okay, now I'm gonna click that button again, I'm gonna raise this up even more. Lunch break! Okay, and that gets it kind of where I want it. Okay, so plus nine. Plus nine works for that clip. Okay, then I'm gonna to go to the next clip. Just a minute. And first of all, I'm gonna take the clip on A2, click that little button that gets the slider, and I'm gonna pull that down to nothing. And then I'm gonna grab, click the button for this slider, and I'm gonna pull that up. And then I'm going to drag my play back and play it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay, that seems pretty good. And then I'm just going to kind of alternate that, okay? I'm going to do the same thing for each of these. No. Now. Okay, so I'm going to raise that. Okay. And then I'm going to raise that. No, now. Okay. Okay, let's raise both of these up as far as they'll go. When you adjust this way, you can only go up to plus 12. We do have an audio mixer that we're not gonna talk about in this class that you can, will allow you to actually go above plus 12. No, now. Okay. But we're gonna leave that like this. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna bring this audio all the way down and then bring this up. What is this? Green tea. Bring this down and this up. Green tea, but I wanted a Coke. And once again, I'm just alternating these at this point. But I wanted a Coke. So does that for you, of course. And I'm going to do this for the rest of the clip. So once again, whenever Tristan's talking, we bring her channel up and Rory's down. You've been looking a little puffy lately. This is better for you. Trust me. Where's Hal? He's out with Johnny. Now this brings in the case for doing what's called checkerboarding your audio, where we'd have each of these, I mean, the dialogue is on their own track, but we would also be getting rid of the, the audio of the other characters. So it would, be, it would actually look like a checkerboard if we were to do that, okay? Once again, that gets us into more of the advanced aspect of this. In this case, you know, when Roy's talking, bring hers up and bring Tristan's all the way down. He's out with John and Vincent. Why do you let him do that? Okay, and just alternate. So go ahead and do that on your own. I'm going to go ahead and do mine, but I am going to kind of fast forward through it because this is going to take a few minutes. Why do you let him do that to you? And it's just going to be very repetitive. So I'm gonna finish this, but I'm gonna fast forward. Once again, if you need to pause it and do this on your own, you can do that. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this and kind of get through this as quickly as possible.
first. Okay, I'm almost done with this, but I wanted to point out one more thing with this. Once you make an adjustment to the gain, and you can see that black line going through the middle of the clip, once you see that black line, you no longer have to go to the button in the bottom left corner of the clip. You can actually just grab the line, the black line, and drag it up or down to raise and lower the gain. No, I don't trust those. This is true, Veggie. Okay, so once again, once you see that black line, once you have the black line, you can just use that. Now, I gotta tell you, you know, this is kind of like the, the I don't wanna say the quick and easy because I don't think it's that easy, um, but this is the way to adjust the levels directly in the timeline, kind of like you're used to doing in other programs, okay? But just to kind of show you what's ahead, if we go up to tools, there is an audio mixer and we can use the audio mixer to do these same adjustments and I think it is usually a little bit more user friendly, but right now we're keeping it basic, just using the controls directly in the timeline. Okay, the last thing I wanna do here is I want to add tiny little crossfades at all of the edit points in the audio and that will smooth out some of the pops that we're hearing at these edit points. And here's a quick way to do that. I'm gonna put my playhead before this very first audio clip here, and I'm gonna hit I to mark it in. Then I'm gonna put my playhead at the end of the sequence and I'm gonna hit O to mark it out. And then I'm gonna put my playhead near any one of the edits in the audio tracks. And then I'm gonna deactivate video two, I'm gonna deactivate video one because we're about to add transitions to our timeline, specifically audio transitions. And when you add the transitions using what's called the quick transition window, it's going to add the transitions to whatever tracks are active. Okay, so we only wanna add it to audio. So we mark it in and out where we wanna add the transitions. We turn the other tracks off so only the A1 and A2 tracks are active. And then we're gonna click this button right here, the quick transition button. Your keyboard shortcut is the backslash key. That's the key right above the return key. Click on that and it's gonna open up this window here, quick transition. Now, we're not gonna to get too deep into this. We're gonna pretty much leave most of these settings as they are. We're gonna verify that A1 and A2 are selected over here. We're gonna leave this set to dissolve, sit it on cut, but the duration we're gonna change it to two frames, and that's gonna add a tiny little crossfade at each of the edit points. Then we're gonna say apply to all transitions into out. We're gonna check that box right there, and we're gonna click add. And if you look in your timeline now, there are little tiny icons at all the edits, and those are uh, crossfades. I'm gonna clear my in and out points, I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my sequence. I'm gonna play it, check my work. Lunch break. Just a minute. No, now. Okay. What is this? Green tea. But I wanted a Coke. Soda's bad for you. Plus, you've been looking a little puffy lately. This is better for you, trust me. Where's Hal? He's out with John and Vincent. Why do you let him do that to you? What? Dump all the work on you? He doesn't. He's never here. He works at night. Really? Yes, it's true. He finishes projects from the day before and starts on new projects for the next day. Sometimes I think he just leaves because the sun is coming up. You're such an apologist for him. He's taking advantage of you. No, he isn't. He isn't. You know what I say? What? I say you open your own business. You're too good to be working for someone who slacks off and leaves you to do all the work. That's not how it is. I already told you we split the work equally, really. 
Sure. Really, if Hal could work for 24 hours, I'm sure he would. Oh yes, he's such a saint. You know, I bet he never even leaves. He probably crawls <laughs> under desk and sleeps whenever he gets tired. <laughs> mm, no, mm -mm. that's weird. Your mind's not working right. Or maybe it works too well. What is this? A veggie burger. But I wanted a hamburger. No, you didn't. This is better. What, is this one of those fake meat pretend burgers? No, I don't trust those. This is true veggie. Okay, so there we go. We are f we're finished now for now at least, and we want to export. We want to be able to show this to people. So I'm going to go over here to my track selectors. I'm going to turn all of my track selectors on. I'm going to make sure that none of my timeline is marked. And then we're going to go up to File, Output, Export to File. File, Output, Export to File, or you can go over to your record monitor, right click, export. It's the same thing either way. First of all, it's gonna ask you what to name your uh, export. I'm gonna call this scene 20 dialogue scene. Oops, let's see. I can type. Dialogue scene. And then I need to choose a location. So I've got my external drive here. I'm going to click on my external drive. I'm going to click new folder. I'm just going to call this exports. So I've named it. I've chosen a location. But now I need to go down to the settings. So we're going to click on options. And we basically start at the top and work our way down. So export as, you've got lots of different file types, but once again, we're gonna do something very specific. We're gonna export for say, YouTube, or this will work for a lot of different uh, platforms like this. So all you need to do is a Google search and see what settings they want for whatever site you're going to upload it to. So if I look here, container MP4. Okay, so export as, We've got MP4 as an option. And that's going to kind of reset this window to give you uh, MP4 options. Okay, so then audio co codec, we're just going to commit some of these to memory. Audio codec AAC, video codec H.264, frame rate, it'll support the frame rate that we have, bit rate, and so on. Okay, so really just follow these instructions. So I'm going to work my way down. So use marks. Okay, we don't want to use any marks, meaning if I marked in and out points, I could say use marks and it would only export that part of the sequence. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. Use selected tracks. Okay, we did select the tracks so we want to export. So we're going to leave that. We didn't make any audio tracks inactive so we could leave that checked or unchecked, doesn't matter. We're going to leave our raster dimension as is. We, we didn't do any kind of mass or mass margins. So we can leave that alone. We do have the option to export different frame sizes, but we're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave most of this as is. We're gonna do 1920 by 1080, 16 by nine, square pixels, stretch, 24 frames per second. Rec 709, according to Google, they actually want us to keep this in legal range. So I'm gonna say Rec 709, keep as legal range which in the past we, we, you would think, well, the people are watching YouTube on their computers. Computers are typically full range scale from legal range to full range, but according to Google, they say, no, make it legal range. We'll adjust anything on our end that needs to be adjusted. Then codec family. Okay, now we need to go back to here. So codec, H.264. So codec family, H.264. Compression, H.264, color, depth, 8-bit, that's really your only choice. Constant bit rate, target bit rate. Okay, so bit rate, they say, 
if we just look at the instructions, it depends on the frame size. So 1080p, they say for 24 frames per second, eight megabits. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to target bitrate. I'm just gonna drag it down to around eight mega, megabits. Okay, then I'm gonna scroll down, format. Okay, they already said audio format, AAC. And once again, AAC, stereo, sample rate 96 to 48. So we'll do stereo 48, constant bit rate. And then once again, there is a bit rate for stereo is 384 bit rate. 384 is an option. Okay, so these are all the settings that YouTube wants. And I just got them online and just looked them up on Google. Okay, so if you're gonna do this over and over again, so you don't have to make these choices every time, you can save this as a preset. Okay, so save will simply save the settings for the export you're about to do. But save as will save a preset so you don't have to do this every time. So I'm gonna click save as, and I'm gonna say, YouTube, you want to give it a good descriptive name. I'm going to call it YouTube 1080p 24fps, frames per second. I click OK, and now here are your presets. Okay, so now I've got a new preset for this. Okay, so once again, I've named it, chosen the location to put the file I'm about to create. If you don't have a preset, you click Options, choose all of your options, but when you're done, you can save it as a preset, so now you can just go here, choose the preset, and then click Save. And now it's going to export that file. Okay, so this looks like it's going to take about a minute. I'm going to fast forward this so we don't have to wait through it, and then once it's done, we'll take a look at it and see how it did. Okay, so our export is finished. I'm gonna hit Command H to hide Avid. I'm gonna to go to my external drive. There's my exports folder. Here's my scene 20 dialogue scene MP4. I'm just going to double click it to open it in QuickTime and we're going to play it and make sure that it exported the way we want. Lunch break! Just a minute. No, now. Okay. What is this? Green tea. But I wanted a Coke. Soda's bad for you. Plus, you've been looking a little puffy lately. This is better for you, trust me. Where's Hal? He's out with John and Vincent. Why do you let him do that to you? What? Dump all the work on you? He doesn't. He's never here. He works at night. Really? Yes, it's true. He finishes projects from the day before and starts on new projects for the next day. Sometimes I think he just leaves because the sun is coming up. You're such an apologist for him. He's taking advantage of you. No, he isn't. He isn't. You know what I say? What? I say you open your own business. You're too good to be working for someone who slacks off and leaves you to do all the work. That's not how it is. I already told you we split the work equally. Really. Sure. Really? If Hal could work for 24 hours, I'm sure he would. Oh yes, he's such a saint. You know, I bet he never even leaves. He probably crawls under desk and sleeps whenever he gets tired. <laughs> mm, no, mm -mm. that's weird. Your mind's not working right. Or maybe it works too well. What is this? A veggie burger. But I wanted a hamburger. No, you didn't. This is better. What, is this one of those fake meat pretend burgers? No, I don't trust those. This is true veggie.
Mm -hmm. And there we go. So it exported just the way we uh, wanted. And now it's ready to upload uh, to YouTube or wherever. Okay, so that is the end of class. That is our basic Avid Media Composer class. So if you've never used Avid Media Composer before, or maybe you're moving over to another system and you want to kind of learn a little bit, this kind of shows you the editing, uh, how the edit, some of the editing works in Media Composer. Now, as I said, I'm going to do more advanced classes that get a little bit more into what's going on under the hood. We're going to talk about things like linking versus importing. Okay, we just linked uh, to our media in this particular uh, class. Uh, a more professional workflow, typically you import media uh, and create new Avid media that it puts in a specific location, uh, but that's a little advanced uh, for this. I really just wanted to show you guys, you know, in, out, insert, overwrite, um, you know, kind of what the interface looks like and how with just a little bit of knowledge, uh, you can put something together pretty decently. But as I do the more intermediate and advanced classes, we're gonna start talking about the trim tools, trim mode. This software goes really, really deep. I mean, we covered a lot of information in about three hours here, okay? But you learned how to create a project, you learned how to create a user profile, we learned how to link to media, we learned how to edit a sequence, basic drag and drop editing, inserts, overwrites. Uh, we learned how to do a little bit of audio work. Uh, we talked a little creative at the same time, and we learned how to export our work. So uh, if you did uh, you know, purchase and download the media for this class, just know that I've used the same media for my uh, Premiere Pro basic, Basics class and I'm gonna be doing a DaVinci Resolve Basics class that uses this same media, okay? So if you wanna do those classes as well, you already have the media, you do not have to purchase and download it again. Okay, and uh, if you have any uh, thoughts or suggestions, things you would like me to see, uh, like you would like to see me do and demonstrate in some of these classes, you know, put them in the comment section. Uh, I will take a look at that and try to accommodate uh, as much as I can. And once again, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to these videos. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the class and I'll see you in the next one.